morning, I'd like to bring the January 4th, 2023 Planning Advisory Commission meeting to order. The official start of this meeting today is 10 a.m. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please silence or turn off your cell phones. Thank you. I remind those in the audience and those watching on TV that this is the first hearing of any rezoning, text change, or special exception requests brought before us today. We will first hear a reading of the staff report for the case by planning staff and ask the applicant to provide a brief overview of the request. We will then give the opportunity for anyone in the audience to speak for or against that request or to inquire about said request. The commissioners will have any needed discussion on the case. Once a motion is made and seconded by the commission, a vote will take place and a recommendation will be rendered. The case will go back to the planning department for their independent recommendation. If a favorable recommendation is given, then the case is forwarded to the city council with two independent recommendations. If the planning department makes a recommendation for denial, the applicant will have 10 days from the receipt of the letter stating the denial to notify the clerk of council that they are requesting to be placed on the city council's agenda. The city council of Columbus will hold a public meeting called the first reading. Said council shall consider the case, review planning advisory commission and planning department recommendations and hear discussions on the matter. Council will make a final decision at a second public meeting called the second reading. Our first agenda item today is to approve the minutes of our previous meeting. Does anyone have any comments or corrections regarding the minutes? All righty. Well, I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Yes, Mr. Baker, I get a second. Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand. All righty. That brings us to our first case of the day. Um, REZN-12-22-2286, a, requ a request for a text amendment to amend the text of the Unified Development Ordinance, the UDO, in regards to medical cannabis dispenser, dispenser areas. Thank you, Mr. Cha uh, Chairman. Um, give you a little background. When Georgia passed the medical marijuana uh, law a couple years ago, we went ahead and put it in the ordinance because it was uh, something that was going to be coming, something that was going to be required. Um, since that time, they have implemented their rules. Um, so now we're going back to amend what we have to make sure we're in line with the state. Um, one thing they put in there was uh, that we're having trouble with, and I think a lot of folks are going to have trouble with, is Georgia state law prohibits a medical cannabis dispensary within a thousand feet of a covered entity. A covered entity is a public or private school or an early care education program or a church synagogue or other place of religious worship in existence prior to the date of licensure of a dispensary. Local government may allow dispensing licenses only to locate in places other than those provided in this subsection so long as such modification is needed to allow retail outlets to be established to service registered patients residing um, within such jurisdiction. Um, one thing that we have gone and looked at is where would be the best places for these. And just to, get, just to um, give you an idea of how many we might have, um, I think that there are six grow licenses issued statewide. And of those grow licenses, each chosen grower is allowed to open five dispensaries. Now, those five dispensaries are not going to be in Columbus, Georgia. I'd say on top, um, maybe one, maybe two. That would probably be the extent of it. Keep in mind, this isn't recreational marijuana. This is low-grade THC oil by prescription. And what we've looked at is some of the best places to have these and where they, what they do in Colorado also 
is they utilize old banks. And by us having an appeal process in here where you where one of these folks could come in and appeal and ask council to reduce that distance requirement, which this change will do, they can utilize these old banks. These old banks have security. These old banks have safes. Uh, these dispensaries are highly, highly regulated by the state of Georgia. So we really don't get into it too much, except for the part about this thousand feet. Um, other things that we've put in here, not moving. No, there it is. We've put in like lighting, no flashing lighting, searchlight, spotlights, you know, like you see. Uh, signage, no message boards, just a basic uh, low old dispensary type uh, box sign. Hours operation, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And it has to be in a standalone building, meaning it can't go into a strip center. Um, so essentially, if these changes are made, what would happen is a dis uh, one of these growers will come in here and ask for a dispensary license. And if they're within a thousand feet of one of these covered entities, they will ask council for a reduction. Reduction might be 999 feet, reduction might be five feet. You just, we don't know. But I can tell you right now, I can think offhand of uh, two that are within a thousand feet. Um, I'd have to really look at the two on 10th um, across from Medical Center to see what they're close by. SunTrust at Airport Thruway, Regions at 54th Street, just with the banking industry changing um, and them dropping branches, there is opportunity to utilize these buildings for a, an adaptive reuse. And I'll address any questions y'all might have. And also keep in mind, the CBD stores, the CBD stuff Delta 9 that's being sold in stores, those are citywide and they're considered retail. They're not regulated. This is regulated. All right, any questions? Yes, yes, Thomas. Are these places highly robbed or something while you need all that security? Is there a danger in there? It's, it's, I think it's extremely expensive. And what they use the safes for is, now this is, I don't see this getting robbed because Georgia only allows the low THC oil oh. by prescription only. But I still think with your product, you still want it in the safe at night. Right, right. And most of these banks are already wired for cameras. Right. So it just makes a lot of sense. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, anybody else have a question? Yeah, um, yes, Mr. King. That, that, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Who, who would actually enforce it? Who, would, would the state actually? State of Georgia. And no one in Muskogee County would be responsible for the enforcement? No. Okay. Mm -mm. It's the state, and they've really limited it to where I think they can handle the enforcement. Um, there's a lot of things they don't handle well because of how widespread it is. Personal care homes, these machines in the C stores and whatnot. But this, by keeping it to 10 dispensaries, and I'm telling you, I don't really see a lot of demand uh, for low THC oil that would see dispensaries for oil, oil all over the state. All right, any other questions? All right, does anybody in, in the audience like to speak in favor of this request? I see, no, I see nobody. Would anybody like to speak against this request? Thank you. All right, would a commissioner like to make a motion? All right, might like a second. All right, with regards to REZN, case number REZN 1222-2286, request for a text amendment to amend the text of the Unified Development Ordinance. With regards to the medical cabinets dispensaries, I make a motion that we approve it as presented. Okay, give me a second. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, that um, leads us to our second case of the day, REZN 11-22-2152 a request to rezone 
0.96 acres of land located at 1222 Fifth Avenue. Current zoning is LMI, Light Manufacturing Industrial. Proposed zoning is UPT, Uptown. The proposed use is mixed use. Letitia Littleton is the applicant. The property is located in Council District 7, Woodson. Can we please hear from staff? Yes, sir. I spoke to Ms. Littleton yesterday afternoon. She has had a family emergency that has arisen. Um, she was un unable to attend today. She has requested that her case be tabled until the next meeting. All right. I'll make a motion. We uh, table it to the 18th uh, because she did call in. Uh, just a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Thank you. That brings us to our final case of the day. Uh, REZN 11-22-2153, a request to rezone 0.35 acres of land located at 212 Railroad Street. Current zoning is GC, General Commercial. Proposed zoning is UPT, Uptown. Proposed use of single family, detached. Powers Investments LLC is the applicant. The property is located in the Council District 7, Woodson. Could we please hear from staff? Yes, sir. The general land use is consistent for planning area F. The current land use designation is office professional. The future land use is high uptown. It is compatible with the existing land uses. The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an improved drainage plan prior to issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. Property is served by all city services. There'll be no traffic impact. The site shall meet the codes and regulations of the CC, CCG for residential usage. There'll be no, no school impact, no buffer requirements, no floor bending recommendation, no DRI recommendation. The surrounding zoning to the north is GC, to the south is GC, to the east is UPT, to the west is GC. 15 property owners within 300 feet of the subject's properties were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received one phone call um, in opposition. There's no additional information to this case. All right. Any commissioners have any questions for the staff report? All righty. Will the applicant please come forward, state your name and address for the record, and give us an overview of your request, please? Morning. Name is Will Rember, Powers Investments. I'm Bill Maddox. I'm with EMC Engineering Services. We're the ones that are uh, doing the work. Okay. With the power. Yeah. Would you give us a brief overview of what you're planning on doing? Yes. Um, what we're basically trying to do over here is um, get these these properties that are a little bit older, kind of uh, subdivided, so that we might be able to bring in some additional investment. There's a lot of investment going on in that area right now, and a lot of other properties have been rezoned to UPT, Uptown Columbus. So basically, we're just trying to follow that model to try to create some, some uh, interest and in further investment in that area. And um, it's pretty much in step with what's going on down there. They developed several other buildings in the past year, built some new developments, um, remodeled some right on the same block. And all of those went through without any problems. So I'm just essentially trying to do the same thing that has been going on down there for the last two years or so. Okay. Is there any questions from commissioners? Yes, Mr. King. What's your vision for this block? Uh, I know you're down there, but right on the railroad and. Absolutely. Uh -huh. so, 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 so just really, curious. Yeah, yeah. So the vision is to actually try to get them separated. One of the things that we've had a problem with is, you know, attracting them inside investors. It's a big on one common parcel. It's hard to do so. But if we can get them individualized into separate homes, you can attract a lot more smaller investors that can take on the risk versus reward return on investment to come in and, and, and fix these up. Um, you know try to either do Airbnb or maybe you might renovate it, sell them. We just have more options of ways to increase the property value if you can kind of separate them off from the single parcel aspect. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Ms. Stone. Yes. Are these low income? Yeah, primarily, primarily right now they're kind of low income housing. Um, that's been the model there so far. Obviously, things are changing. So we're trying to, you know, attract outside investment and so we can also lift the rising tide, lifts all boats, it's supposed to lift all boats, but sometimes some boats get left behind. 
So what we're trying to do is make sure our boat gets lifted also with this influx of investment that's coming in uh, the area. Because we've been down there for 20 years almost and um, seen a lot of changes in the crime and demographics. Now all of a sudden we're starting to see an influx of cash investment in that area. So we just want to take advantage of it also. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, any other questions? All right, is, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? I see no one. Is anyone in the audience that would like to speak against this request? Is there any other additional discussion among commissioners? Would a commissioner like to make a motion? Yes, Mr. Baker. For RETN 11-22-2153. Request to rezone 0.35 acres of land located at 212 Railroad Street. Current zoning is VC. Proposed zoning is Uptown. Uh, I recommend that we accept uh, this uh, rezoning um, because it is consistent with land use zoning. Is there a second? All, right. All in favor, raise your right hand. All right, it's approved, sir. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, good morning. Thank you. All right. Is there any other discussions that you made among commissioners today? All right, I'll make a motion we adjourn. I second. Uh, the only thing, next meeting is January the 18th. We'll have three cases for that, that meeting. It will be. Yes, sir. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.